Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Man, as I made my last video and I was uploading it, that massive earthquake hit over on the Syrian and um, Turkey border. And I saw a YouTube video today, I don't recall who made it. Um, I might have captured a, a screenshot of it and we'll give them a shout out when we get there. Um, that states that you'll have an earthquake on one side, this is on the fault lines, and then one on the other side, which they also had one in Israel. And guess what's right in the center? Damascus. Um, I've talked about this many times, the burden of Damascus. Um, I think that, and I'm not sure 100%, uh, the Bible's not completely clear on it, but I believe that the burden of Damascus is going to kick off all the events and the first event will be the rapture of the bride then john will be taken into heaven we the the uh, ceremony will have already been done uh as far as us getting crowns and then he witnesses us casting those crowns i want to be clear on something and i've seen a lot of this <clears throat> going on <coughs> excuse me the seals <coughs> swallowed wrong there the seals have not been opened yet not one uh, they will tell you that they have and I'm going to show you a uh, thing that I found the judgment of God is a mixture of the seals the trumpets and the bowls when Jesus receives the scroll now a lot are, are saying it happened 2,000 years ago and that we've been under the seals this amount of time because we see all of these events but Jesus said when you see them all come together which is what we're seeing now we're seeing earthquakes in diverse places we're seeing hurricanes and tornadoes I just read on the discord which I'm going to put a link on there um, in the discord we have um, someone in there that's living in an area I, I didn't see where she lived uh, but she's living in an area where there is a I think she said a hurricane coming her way and she spoke about her little house um, so pray for her and I prayed I mean this, this, while I was uploading this video I prayed for those people that are in Turkey that's just that's something else I mean that's that's rough um, these are things that are culminating now we have earthquakes we have volcanoes we have hurricanes we have all of these we're seeing the green comet we're seeing all of these things go on some people are trying to attribute this to man as making this stuff remember satan is working very hard to take credit for everything that god has done when you were created you 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 and you and me and all of us were created in the image of God Satan was furious he was absolutely furious Satan did not understand and he still doesn't understand none of the fallen angels understand that they worshiped God because they were created we worship God because we were saved this entire scenario that has played out for the last 6,000 years is culminating at a rapture event and seven years at least seven years of tribulation and then we go into the millennium and I'm going to show you that in Stellarium as well the uh, writing is on the wall as it were as it were um, so Satan was just livid and the reason he was is because we were created in the image of God and I'm getting old but um, we all were created in the image of God meaning not how we look I mean, how we look is how Jesus looked. He came here as a lowly human being in the appearance of man, as a man, and as God, 100% God, 100% man, and he came here to pay the penalty for us. And Satan is just beside himself because he can't contemplate. He wants, Satan doesn't just want to be created. He wants to be saved that's why he brought the Nephilim about because he was trying to get to heaven 
in some other way. He did not. He hates Jesus. He he just hates Jesus. He tempted him for 40 days out in the desert. He does not want to accept the fact that the only way for him to get there, well, there is no way for him to get there, but he attempted a way to get there by corrupting the DNA and saying, hey, look, this DNA is, is part human, so you have to save them. And the answer is no. The DNA, uh, our image, is in the image of God. Our DNA actually has God's name written on it. And every time you breathe, you, you say God's name. Remember, the angels that are fallen, well, all angels and Satan, a third of the angels that fell in Satan, they don't have the breath of life. The breath of life was given to all of the animals and to us. And we, in our breath, accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as God himself who came here and died on a cross for our sins. And this is the way. This is the repentance. This is the point where you realize there is nothing. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. There, and that's it. So Satan's going along. He's mad. Boy, is he mad. And he attempts this uh, this different way to get into heaven, and it fails. And God floods the planet and saves eight souls on that boat. And then, of course, man is fallen. So we must profess that Jesus is the Son of God. He came here. He died on a cross. Three days later, he broke that tomb open. He rose, and when he rose, he brought a lot of people from, I would say, the Old Testament up until the point where... He was on the cross, out of the graves, and ascended into heaven that day. He returned on the eighth day to see Thomas in the upper room and began his walk for 40 days with them. Satan tried it again. He tried it again. He tried to get there through the Tower of Babel. And that's why we have the seven root languages. You can Google it. There are seven root languages. There are thousands of languages or hundreds of languages on the planet, but there are seven root languages that it began with. And God confused their language so that they wouldn't work together because man was working with Satan, trying to work together. And here we are again at the very end, and we're still trying to work our way into heaven. This is the greatest lie from Satan. He created Adam and Eve, and they were perfect. They didn't need anything else. But Satan convinced Eve that you can be more than what God created you. He was attempting to change what God had created. And in doing so, we have 6,000 years of history of sin, and our repentance is a turning to Jesus. So, Satan has been, and he's going to be punished. He's going to be punished, and he knows it, and he knows his time is short. And so uh, we see all these things going on. So let me get into the pictures here real quick. I wanted you to notice that, and, and this is something that God put on my heart a couple of years ago to try to figure this out because so many people will get on here and say, this is ahead of the year. That's ahead of the year. It starts with the first sliver of the moon after the equinox. No, it starts at the equinox. No, it starts at the full moon. No, it starts with the first sliver after the sun reaches Aries. There's so many different calendars. And everybody who has their calendar firmly believes in their calendar. The only problem I have with every other calendar except the Enoch timeline is, first of all, the Enoch timeline did uh, survive on the boat and they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. These Dead Sea Scrolls were on the boat with Noah and he hid them in the Dead Sea where they have been found recently on purpose, I believe, by God. And they confirm the fact that um, the calendar of that time, which they changed, they were on that calendar the entire time until God said, change the head of the year from September to March. Change it from the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, and move Rosh Hashanah up to um, the head of the year, up to the springtime. Now, it was springtime in September previous to the flood. But when the flood happened, the earth in some fashion, which I can't quite pin down yet, but in some fashion, he went through, he went through all of those things twice. There are six months that we have repeated. 
It was beginning at September. God moved it back. He's never moved time forward. He's only moved it back. He moved it back six months. And the head of the year now is March 17th. And you'll see it here. March 17th is St. Patrick's Day, the Green Day. March 16th is the Day of Equal Parts. You can go to time and date right now and look it up. That day, forevermore, will be the day that there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours in the night. This is the day, while they were discussing the death of Lazarus, Jesus, out of nowhere, says, are there not 12 hours in the day? This is the day, at nightfall, where you cannot move for two days. Jesus, on the 16th at nightfall, knew it was Rosh Hashanah. He knew that it was the beginning of the year. No one else, even though in Exodus 12 they were told to move the head of the year, they didn't. They still call Rosh Hashanah in September. They still call uh, the blowing of the trumpets. Uh, I, I think that... Um, the blowing of the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets is probably still in September, but the blowing of the trumpets heralding in the new year was supposed to be moved to the new Rosh Hashanah in March, on March 17th. So on March 16th here, Lazarus dies. At nightfall, it becomes Rosh Hashanah. It becomes a new year. This year, it is 5782. It did not change in September. It will change on March the 17th or March the 16th at nightfall. Why didn't Jesus go anywhere for those two days? Because nobody else in his camp knew why they didn't move. They just sat there for two days, even though Jesus knew and he admitted that Lazarus had died. At nightfall on the 16th, he doesn't move. He doesn't move on the 17th. He doesn't move on the 18th. In the morning, on the 19th, he has completed Rosh Hashanah. There is a law that says you cannot move on Rosh Hashanah. Remember, Jesus did not come here to break the law or to change the law. He came here to fulfill the law. Why did Jesus sit still for those two days when he could have left two days earlier to resurrect Lazarus? And the reason he didn't was because he was obeying the law that he himself had created. And that law was on Rosh Hashanah, you cannot travel. So on the 18th, sorry, on the 17th and on the 18th, he did not travel. On the 19th and the 20th, he traveled. And on the 20th, he reaches the tomb of Lazarus. And he resurrects Lazarus on March the 20th. Now, I've showed you this. There's a lot of new subscribers. I get about 100 every video, 100 new subscribers, and I really thank you for that. I just want to get this message out. Um, aside from your prayers, I don't ask for anything. Uh, it's, this is just something I do uh, by myself as I research this stuff. I found this. Again, this is somebody else's work, and they discovered on enochcalendars.webs.com that the Fourth star of Pegasus skirts along the horizon. It has since the beginning of time, and it will until the end of the thousand years of the millennium. This fourth star of Pegasus skirts along the horizon on the new, new year, as God turned it back six months. And it does this on March 16th, every year, every single year. It used to, or it still does, actually. It still skirts along the horizon on September the 14th, making September the 15th the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah again. It does this every single year. This, in on September the 14th, was the head of the year previously, before God moved it. And if you'll look at the two dates between March 16th, when this four star skirts along the horizon, to September the 14th, it is exactly 182 days. Remember, Jesus was here for 33 and a half years. He was here for 33 years and 182 days. And 182 days exactly from when Jesus was born until Jesus went to the cross is 182 days, perfectly, plus 33 years. So 33 years and 182 days from when Jesus was born to when Jesus went to the cross, when he came into this world, and when he left this world was exactly 33 years and 182 days. 
September the 14th. Now remember, the days of the week for us, these are pagan named days, will always move because they do not uh, acknowledge the day out of time. There is nowhere on our calendar where we'll count uh, one day as two days. So the day of the week will change. If they did what they were supposed to do, what God commanded them to do with Thomas's one long day, and if they used a side reel day like they were supposed to, the earth would be facing the same point exactly one year later, 364 days. And uh, you can also Google that. It's, it's called a side reel day. And it is exactly 364 days a year. Again, no seals have been opened. No trumpets have been blown. No bowls have been uh, poured out. None of this has happened yet. It will not happen until we get to heaven. These bowls are judgments. We are not judged. We are taken away. We are the bride of Christ. We are taken out of judgment. We are born before she travails. We are those that will not see these things come to pass. This is the, there's many verses that describe this in the Bible. And um, it says the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls are three series of end-time judgments from God. The judgments get increasingly worse and more devastating as the end times progress. So as the bowls I'm sorry, as the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls are open, it gets progressively worse as it goes through it. What you're seeing now is birth pangs. What you're seeing now is the culmination to look up. Jesus said, when you see these things come into pass, look up, because your redemption draweth near. There we go. I, I found this. I don't remember where. But I found this, the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the seal on the scroll is broken open by the Lamb. The first seal reveals the Antichrist. The scroll cannot be opened until the Lamb, Jesus, who is the only one worthy to open it, comes forth. You'll find this in Revelation 5, 6. Jesus does not open the scroll to break the seal until after God has received crowns from his saints. We, the believers, cast our crowns at the feet of God the Father in chapter 4.10. We cannot receive our crowns until we have been raptured and taken to heaven. Revelation 4.1 As you can see here, They've done it backwards to answer the question, are any seals opened yet? And the answer is no. No crowns have been cast at the feet of God yet. We do that. There are 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands upon thousands. This is not speaking to the angels. There are many voices of the angels, but then it continues on to speak about those who are redeemed and those number are 10,000 times 10,000s 10, and thousands upon thousands. Now that number is upwards of 100 million, but less than 200 million. This is the bride of Christ. They are a part of the group that is selected out of the elect. Okay. Um, this group of people will be taken out uh, of all of these things. This is a select group of people that Jesus has chosen. This is the argument for the preacher rapture that many people missed. Jesus Christ was judged on the cross in his own body on behalf of the sinner, never to be judged again. He or the sinner who is in Christ. The Bible says that the church is the body of Christ. If the church, which is his body, spent even one second on earth during the time of God's judgment, during the seven-year tribulation, Christ's body would be judged again, meaning God would be unjust and would violate his own word. The rapture of the church is absolutely before the seven-year tribulation period. 
This is the prophecy of Damascus, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Now, is this a sign for the bride, or is this a sign for the saint? Those who will see those six seals open, and on the sixth seal... We see John in heaven asking, or actually we have an angel asking John, who are these? These came, this is a great multitude that no man can count. It's a different group of people. This group of people have washed their robes white. They've done this during the tribulation. They have received palm branches. They do not receive crowns. They do not get a brilliant white robe. They do not get a rod of iron to rule the nations. They do not get this mansion but they live in heaven. They are very, very important. They are a massive group of people that no one can count. Is this Damascus event? And, and again, remember uh, Paul, who was named Saul, on his way to Damascus was blinded uh, by God. And he stayed blind for three days. He was blinded for three days. He went in Damascus and he waited, and after three days, he, re he his sight returned to him. Um, remember, uh, I don't know if this event is for the bride or if this is for the saint, but a lot of things are happening in this area. Uh, I watched a video where it stated that when an earthquake hits on the top of a fault line, it will respond on the bottom of a fault line, and then it will hit in the center of both fault lines. And I'm going to show you here something in a moment. I wanted to show you again. This is where the sun will be on March the 16th, this day in the year 3030, will still be the day of equal parts. There will still be 12 hours in the day and 12 hours a night. This day will still mark the last Sabbath of the year, setting up the Sabbath for the year to come. This is a thousand years of the millennium. This is 1,000 years after the um, end of the tribulation. That's where the sun will be. It, you notice that it has crossed through the water that is being poured out. So it was a, it's a perfect uh, fit that uh, each year, while the millennium is going on, and those people are human, they will have children, they will um, be capable of being tempted at the very end, and then God's going to wrap the whole thing up. We cannot be in the presence of God. They cannot be in the presence of God. We can, because we will be changed. But they can't, because they are still capable of being tempted. We cannot be tempted. They can. These group of people that go through the millennium for those thousand years um, can be tempted at the end by Satan. So, that's year 3030. Here's the, here is what it looks like seven years from now. The sun is just now coming into Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. In seven years, it will be out of Pisces. This is called the procession of the sun. This is still March 16th. This is still the day of equal parts. This is the day where there will be 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. It doesn't matter... What, what we see on the other side of the sun as we progress through our years. At this point, it's coming into Aquarius. At this point, it has already gone through the water. It, this will be the end. And when Jesus pours out his spirit on all of these people for a thousand years, it'll be very blissful here on the planet because uh, he'll be in charge. He'll be in charge of everything for 1,000 years. I wanted to show you, in 2030, the day of equal parts, seven years from now, is still March the 16th. This is as far as I can go on time and data. It won't let me go any further. But 600 years from now, the day of equal parts is March the 16th. It will always be March the 16th. If you go back 4,000 years, the day of equal parts where Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? This was set up from the very beginning. This is March 16th, 12 hours in the day. 
and 12 hours at night. This is where Jesus, while talking about Lazarus, this is, you'll find this in John 11, 9. Jesus answers, are there not 12 hours in the day? He just randomly says it. But as we know, there's nothing random in the Bible. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said unto he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Now from God's perspective, remember, we are created beings. Every single one of us, no matter how tall, short, um, no matter what uh, physical um, uh, attributes that we have, it doesn't matter. We were all, every single one of us, created by God. And we have the breath of life in us and every opportunity, each and every one, it doesn't matter what you've done, every single one of us has an opportunity to confess that Jesus Christ, in fact, came here, died for our sins on the third day, paid the full penalty. On the third day, he rose, and then on the eighth day, he returned to Thomas in the upper room and walked with man for 40 days. But if a man walketh in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Again, he's sleeping. In God's eyes, he's just sleeping, because we, as humans, haven't seen the other side per se. We believe it by faith, but we haven't seen it, so we have a fear of death the curiosity that scares us a bit, and that is, uh, but from God's perspective, eh, we're just sleeping. We will spend an eternity somewhere. Each and every single one of us, billions of us, will spend an eternity somewhere. And it is as simple, it is the most simplest thing, is to recognize who God is, you just look around, just look at water. I mean, look at the fish, look at the everything on the planet, just look at it. You know it was created. You know this didn't just accidentally happen. This has, They can't find this happen. They'll tell you that they can find it happening somewhere else, but it's not true. We're it. This is it, where we are. Otherwise, why would Satan even waste his time here? If there were planets all over the universe, why would he even be here wasting his time? Why wouldn't he just say, all right, you created man here, I'll just go over there. Because there's nothing over there. This is it, right here on this planet, us. He says, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Again, for God himself, death is nothing. It, it, it's, a little, it's a little tiny pebble that you trip a little bit, but that's it. You're, you're going to close your eyes here and open your eyes somewhere else. And it all depends on what you believe. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Jesus said, Sorry, then said Jesus unto them plainly. He plainly told them because now Jesus has to talk to them in their language because they don't understand his language. Lazarus is dead. Lazarus has died. He died on a day where there was 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. This happens on March the 16th. Lazarus died on March the 16th. Uh, let's see. Speaking of the children of Israel, uh, the children of Israel saying, Verily, my Sabbath shall keep. Okay, this is a commandment of God. It is the one commandment that we've had a very tough time figuring out. And I think I did. The 16th, or uh, through help of others, obviously, other people have found this information. Nobody's actually, from what I can see on the internet, nobody's actually ever just applied everything to a timeline like this. Um, once I knew, and a couple years ago, God had put on my heart to figure out the head of the year. And I searched and I tried to prove each and every one. You'll remember last year I had them all on the timeline just to prove if anything fits. And if I use any other timeline other than this one, I don't have Mary conceiving on Christmas Day. I don't have the head of the year beginning on 
uh, St. Patrick's Day. I don't have uh, Purim landing on February. Uh, none of these things fall correctly. I don't have the Pentecost and Shavuot landing properly. Nothing lands properly. I don't have Jesus being born on September the 29th and eight days later, seven days later, him being circus. I don't, nothing matches if I don't use this timeline. So that's, that's why I've stuck to this timeline this year. Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath. Now we have to learn the Sabbath because why? It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. God set this up from the very beginning. September 26th is the last Sabbath of the year, marking the Sabbath for the entire year into the future. You, it doesn't matter what calendar you use. You have to find the day of equal parts and you have to count. And you have to obey God when he said in, in Exodus 12, this now is the head of your year. We know that Lazarus died on March the 16th. We know that God resurrected him on March the 20th. Four days later, we know why Jesus sat still for two days. He couldn't go anywhere because this is his law and he came to fulfill the law, not to change it or break it. That's why he sat still on Rosh Hashanah for two days and he didn't move. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. How are you going to know when all these feast days are throughout the year if you don't know where the first Sabbath is? And if we all argue back and forth about moon and full moon and, and first liver of the moon and uh, equinox and uh, Aries, it was in Aries back in Jesus' day, but due to the progression of the sun, it is now in Pisces. I can show that to you. That ye may know that I am the Lord and doth sanctify you. If it was in Tended for all mankind, then why specifically say strangers within your gates? Everyone should know about this Sabbath, and that keeps happening. <laughs> it never stops happening. All right, I wanted to point this out up there at the top, in uh, uh, just above Gazantep. Gazantep is where that massive, massive earthquake hit. I think they said there were three of them, and one of them registered an 8.1, 7.8, and 7.5. Now, to reverberate, this is a fault line. It's my understanding. And again, I saw a video on this, and I thought it was amazing. At the bottom, in the West Bank in Israel, a four point, I think it was a 4.1 uh, rattled off, which is the other side of the fault line. Guess what lies right in the center? They said it hits on one side, and then it hits on the other, and then the center is what you look at. Damascus. Is that the burden? Is that going to take place, letting us know that there will be three days of darkness and then the rapture will occur? Or is this a sign to the saints? I don't know. Um, so what am I looking at? My next thing that I'm looking at, obviously, is going to be February the 14th, Valentine's Day. I don't have, it is a Dar 1. Valentine's Day is a Dar 1. I don't have any major events that I can point to except that seven days ago or seven days previous to a Dar 1 um, was Shabbat 24 and that's February the 7th where um, they claim the way we saw the white balloon and we saw uh, that the core of our planet has stopped spinning. I didn't say the planet stopped spinning now. I said the core has stopped spinning. And as a result, I think, is what caused the earthquake. And uh, as I was making my video last time, that's uh, as I was uploading it, that's when all those earthquake, uh, earthquakes struck. So seven days later is February the 14th. So it's something I am looking at. And uh, then after that, I'm looking at February the 28th. February the 28th is exactly 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year. Rosh Hashanah, March 17th. 5783 will occur. Of course, I have 2022. I should have put 2023, but well, not really because, uh, well, yeah, March 17th will be for next year. Um, it would have started on 2023, but 
From March 17th of 2022, if you add 11 months, see that down there, 348 days, it's 11 months and 11 days exactly. It lands on February the 28th, and that is Purim. That date, February 28th, March 1st, is exactly 30 days before the cross. The Purim is supposed to land 30 days before the cross. So Purim lands on Adar 14th, which is February the 28th. Now, I wanted to show you this lineup that happens on March the 16th, 2023, this year. You have Venus, Jupiter, the Sun, Mercury, all together in one constellation. And then you have Saturn over there in Aquarius, making his way through Aquarius. Uh, not good with Stellarium, but this looks very promising to me that we have all of these a celestial uh, planets together in, in the same uh, constellation. Um, I showed you this before, uh, the day of equal parts and how it lands. I showed you um, in order for each month to have 91 days, like it does, you would have to, at 23.5 degrees, when we enter 23.5 degrees, we do that on June 15th, and we do that again on December the 15th. And at the end of it is December the 30th and June the 30th. In the very center, you have seven days before. And on the eighth day, you have the very center, which is June the 21st and um, December the 21st, the longest and the short day. And then seven days afterwards, on each side, you have the end of it being in 23.5 degrees, giving us a total of 47 degrees of movement of our sun. Now, I told you before, uh, you cannot walk. You cannot travel. This is why Jesus did not move. Rosh Hashanah, high holy days. Now, in Jesus' time, first we had the Enoch timeline, the Enoch calendar. That's the calendar that they used all the way up until the Greeks forced them to adhere to the moon. In 400 BC, the Greeks said, nope, we're going to use the new moon. The problem was it was only 354 days a year, so it didn't work. So that calendar of the moon literally only lasted for a period of about 150 years. 50 years previous to Jesus coming, 50 years BC, a new calendar came out. It recognized a 365-day-a-year timeline brought about by Julius Caesar, but it was also flawed. There's actually 365 and 24.25 days. So he was ahead. He was off. After a couple hundred years, he'd be off by a day again. So Gregor, uh, Greg, you know, we adhered to that calendar from 50 BC up until 1582 AD. About 500 years ago, a little bit less than 500 years ago, a new calendar came out by the church, by Gregorian. Um, the Gregorian calendar is what we use now. It fixed that little detail that Julius Caesar had with his Julian calendar in that it wasn't 365 and a quarter days, it's 365.2425 days. But Jesus did not travel on this day on Rosh Hashanah because Jesus knew that it was Rosh Hashanah. No one else did because they disobeyed God at every turn. And when God said, this is now the head of your year, it will no longer be on September the 15th. We're going to move it up here to March the 17th. And to prove it, Lazarus died on March the 16th. And Jesus did not travel for two days. And that is the proof that it was Rosh Hashanah. Why didn't he travel for those two days to go resurrect his friend two days earlier? Because it was a sign unto us. And what is that sign? The Sabbath is the sign unto us. Okay, so go back here real quick and then I'll show you where we're at and I'll get off of here. The fourth star of Algenib does skirt along the horizon. This is the last Sabbath of the year. It is also the day of equal parts. This is the day Lazarus died. This is the day that Mary and Martha buried him. When Mary and Martha had touched Lazarus to bury him, they were unclean for seven days. Jesus did not move for two days. 
Mary and Martha did not go to where Jesus was. They did not travel for two days. The travelers were messengers sent by Mary and Martha to tell Jesus that Lazarus was sick because Lazarus was sick two days earlier on March the 14th. March the 14th, they leave. They travel for two days to get to Jesus. They get there. They tell Jesus that Lazarus is sick because as far as they know, when they left, Lazarus was sick. Mary and Martha now are burying Lazarus on March the 16th because he has died. Jesus knows this because he's Almighty God. He knows everything. But Jesus sits still for two days. He sits still because the 17th or at nightfall on the 16th, it is Rosh Hashanah. Nobody else knows this. Nobody else pays attention to this. Only God would know this because they have wholeheartedly disobeyed the law and that was put forth in Exodus 12. So, Mary and Martha perform a ceremony. The Bible records that after touching a dead body, you must perform a ceremony after the third day. If you do not, then you will not be clean after seven days. Jesus could not have a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus on the eighth day, if Mary and Martha had not performed their cleansing ceremony, they did not go anywhere. They did not go tell Jesus that Lazarus had died. They sent a messenger. You can read that in the Bible for yourself. Three days later, they had a ceremony. The next day, they resurrected Lazarus. Jesus resurrected Lazarus on March the 20th. Mary and Martha's ceremony is over with on the seventh day. And on the eighth day, they have a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Find it ironic that Lazarus, being the dead one, is not unclean, but Mary and Martha are unclean for burying him. I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. The Bible records that this meal took place six days before Jesus goes to the cross. The Bible also records that a lamb must be taken into the house four days previous to it being sacrificed. The triumphant entry happened four days previous to the cross on March the 26th. On March the 30th, Jesus goes to the cross. March the 30th, April 1st, April Fool's Day, Jesus has fooled them. He, they did not kill him like they thought. He went to Hades. He went there for three days, so three full days and three full nights. On April the 3rd, he completed pain for this on April the 2nd. He rose before sunrise on April the 3rd. On April the 3rd, early in the morning, the tomb was empty before sunrise. This is also the day that the water begins to side, subside 100, whoops, 150 days. When dealing with the flood, now remember the flood was on the previous calendar. 150 days, the water subsides up there at the top. And then... It's, it records in the first month and the 17th day of that month, the ark rested 153 days after the flood began. And it did that on the day Jesus rose. The ark rested on Mount Ararat. Jesus had reversed the curse. Now let's go to where we are now and I'll uh, get out of here. Right now, we're coming up on Valentine's Day, February the 14th. We saw a massive earthquake. And are we going to continue to see earthquakes over in that area and something go on with Damascus? If something happens to Damascus, I will be on here as quickly as I can, <laughs> screaming about it, saying, watch, watch, it's coming, it's coming. I'll be, this will be a very exciting day and a very somber day for me because, you know, those poor people uh, in Damascus. But Damascus is promised to be a ruinous heap, a hissing, a place where the birds will land and be fearful of no one because there won't be anyone there. No one will live in Damascus after this moment. And I have argued uh, many times that I believe God is the one that's going to do this. They're trying to give man the credit with this thing called harp, and uh, they're doing all this and that. I mean, if if they were going to uh, 
uh, do this with HARP. I would think they would do it to Russia or or in Ukraine or one of those areas over there, China. I don't just don't, I don't see what Turkey would have anything to do with why they would use that. I think this is 100% God that's putting all this into play. Um, God's ultimately in charge of everything. Purim is exactly 11 months and 11 days after March the 17th. Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, and that is February the 28th. So I am very, very close, uh, closely looking at Damascus. Uh, three days, if an event uh, levels Damascus, and the, the Bible records there's a couple of other cities that will be leveled. Um, Three days after that event, I'm looking at February the 14th, uh, Valentine's Day. What a perfect day to go to heaven, right? Uh, uh, be my Valentine, Valentine's Day, you know? Again, it's just amazing how this timeline that I use, um, m major events are landing on our calendar. December the 25th, Tevet 10, Mary conceives. January the 1st, our new year. It's a Pentecost. It's the day that the egg would have attached itself to the uterine wall. This is the day that Mary had traveled seven days to see her cousin. This is the day that um, John the Baptist leapt in the womb, uh, excited because Jesus was there. And Jesus was literally in the womb for seven days. From January the 1st, what we call New Year's Day, what they didn't call back then, it's just amazing how it lands there. It's just it's it's crazy how it lands there perfectly. I know it does because Jesus was in the womb for exactly 40 weeks. He would not have missed it by one day ahead or one day behind. And when you do that, Jesus was born on tabernacles. He come to tabernacle with us on Sukkot. And that happened on September the 29th. Mary, and to prove this, God sent us a little sign um, where the moon... As it eclipses, Uranus goes from blood red to white. It takes 40 days after a male child is born for uh, her for her to be clean. 40 days after a male child. And what did we see 40 days after September the 29th? We saw that um, blood moon washed white as it crosses over Uranus, which Uranus means heaven. So Jesus would have had to have been circumcised eight days later. There is no other event back here that falls perfectly eight days later. Nothing falls back here. It has to be this. This is the moment where Jesus was circumcised on the last day of tabernacles, the great eighth day, the day where um, his stepfather would have given him his name and the day he was circumcised. So what are we looking for down here? We are looking for Purim. Purim is uh, February the 28th. After that, I mean, I'm, I'm intently looking at February the 14th. I'm really looking at any moment now. I don't see anything that must happen. Um, uh, we have figured out our Sabbath, and we've followed it throughout this entire year. And um, February the 28th is being Purim, man on a long journey. Uh, Jesus will go to the cross on March the 30th which is exactly 30 days later after Purim. Um, you have, again, at the end here, like I showed you at the very beginning, Adar 31, the day Lazarus died, and they buried him, and they were unclean for seven days. I don't know if we're going to go, um, the dead in Christ must rise first, right? I don't know if we're going to go when uh, on the anniversary of Lazarus being resurrected on March the 20th, or... Uh, if we're going to go on March the 16th, the Sabbath that God says will be a sign unto us, or 30 days before being Purim, or even 14 days before that being Valentine's Day. So many things are landing on the Gregorian um, calendar that it's hard to ignore that God's simply using um, our dates for his um, glory, and that being... Christmas Day being when she got pregnant, New Year's Day being when uh, she visited her cousin, um, March the 17th, uh, St. Patrick's Day being the day that uh, the head of the year. So it's just, it's, it's just these dates keep popping up perfectly in line. So anyway, that's my take on things. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody and accept the Lord into your heart private moment between you and your father your creator you're here for a reason you are not here by accident 
every single one of you is very important to God. Um, whether you are saved, uh, the, the, what are we saving people from? Or, or not us. What's God saving people from? What's he using us to save people from? And that's the lake of fire. He's using us to save people from the lake of fire. He's not using us to save people from going through tribulation, to change their hearts and their minds, to kneel down to him, just like Elisha did. When he saw Elijah go, Elijah said, if you see me go, then um, you'll get a double portion. And that means to me that the moment, and I talk to as many people that will listen, the moment that that rapture occurs, do not think it's something silly like aliens or, you know, all the bad people left and uh, we inherit the earth. No, no, the rapture just occurred. The rapture has just occurred, and that's where everybody went. And as long as you can see that, you will receive a double portion, and you will be protected, and you will go through a portion of tribulation. I don't know how long those six seals are going to take to open. I showed you that no seals are open yet. Um, if one seal had been opened, then God or Jesus would have been punished more than just on the cross, and that's unheard of, simply unheard of. And we know that uh, the seals are a judgment of God, and there is no way that God is going to judge us. There is a misunderstanding of uh, seal six that it has something to do with the elect or the bride, and it just simply does not. Um, those come out of great tribulation. The Bible clearly says in seal six, who are these? Oh, those are those that came out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes white and they carry palm branches. It's a different group of people. It's a massive group, a group that no man can count. We're trying to lump these two groups together. Even though we come out of that group, it's the select of the elect. That's the bride, the select of the elect. So... Keep watching. Uh, I'm going to put a link to Discord. Come in there. If you have anything about anything on this timeline, say, hey, guess what? This matches it. And I do. I get, so <laughs> I get so many wonderful people telling me things about the timeline. And did you notice this? And did you notice that? I really like to know, like, when did Enoch go? I'd love to know that. When, what date did Enoch go? When did Elisha go? I'd love to know that, too. You know, um, what date did Moses uh, God bury his bones. You, you know that Satan is out there constantly. He brought a railing ac accusation against God for hiding the bones of Moses. So Satan is playing a let's call it let's call it chess. He's playing a game of chess with God, and he thinks he's going to win. But God created him. He's a created being, and. God is so much more infinite than Satan even understands, I guess. I, I don't know what he's thinking. But anyway, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, share the video and like the video because it creates an algorithm and uh, these videos might make it through to explain to the saints what's going on. Hang in there. Don't know how long those six seals are going to be take to be opened. Is it going to be three days, seven days, or five months? I, I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I had a whole video to talk about the procession of the sun and how creation started in Gemini and then the flood happened in the horns of the bull and then Jesus was born um, as if you follow the procession if you go into Stellarium and walk back you know 4,000 years Stellarium wasn't doing it right but my other program does uh, star stargaze I think it's called um, but if you if you go back in time, you'll see the procession of the sun tell the entire story of what we're going through. It starts out in Gemini, God together with man. Then it goes to uh, the horns of the bull. That was the flood. Then it goes to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It is currently in the two fish. Uh, both of them are saved. Uh, one goes up now. One goes up a little bit later after the seals are opened, and then it goes into Aquarius, where Jesus is in control of this planet for a thousand years, it just proceeds through those five constellations. And how long does it take to get through five constellations? Five months. And the Bible says, if I did not cut short, time short, um, no flesh would be saved. And I have, and I'm trying to tie it together. Maybe you can help. Um, but those five months from Gemini until where the sun ends up at the end of the thousand years I showed you in, um, uh, I'm going to forget the constellation now, in uh, Aquarius, uh, it takes five months for, for it to proceed through those, and it also took 
7,000 years for, to, to, for the procession of the sun to go from Gemini to Aquarius. So I guess we'll chat with you later. And I will, I, I don't know what happened. I, I had somebody on there. I was, I took a picture of their Facebook, of their uh, YouTube, but I, I don't know what happened to it. We went right through and I didn't see their picture. So it probably didn't take, but uh, uh, just uh, subscribe to as many as you can. So I think the internet is going to go down for a few days, but it's going to come back up. And I just don't think they can scrub all this. There's a lot of information out here about what's going on and, and what just happened. And, and don't lose heart or hope. And if any of us are left behind, myself included, and it's going to be a real rough day for me, but I'm going to know what happened. I will know what happened and I'll just hang in there and I'll get a double portion and I'll hang in there through the seals. I will not accept that mark. I will not accept that mark. That mark comes out three and a half years after um, the uh, the rapture occurs. So, all right, Repo Man 64, we'll chat with you again later.